Hey everybody, it's Chloe here with Rooted Dog Training, and we have a question this week from a follower. They're a actually asking for a relative, and uh, it's they have this new puppy, and they have uh, the dog is on the walk, and the dog stops in its tracks and does not want to go any further. They've actually gone to actually picking the dog up and carrying it the rest of the way home, uh, even for as long as a mile. So, this is not ideal. <laughs> One, we want to make sure that if, I don't know much about this puppy, but we do want to keep in mind that we don't want to be taking young puppies out for long walks. They're still developing, so we want to be very careful about how much, how much pressure we're putting on the dog, uh, physically speaking. No. Very whiny dog today. This is Muncie. She's in for a boarding train. I was going to use her as a demo, so just FYI. But, uh, <clears throat> so we want to be careful about that. But ideally, depending on the age, if the puppy is, you know, 14 weeks, 16 weeks or older, you can start using a prong collar, and which is our go-to to, you know, encourage dogs to walk nicely, walking with you, keep them walking with you, um, keeping them from pulling, all those things. It's a fantastic tool. But if you're using a harness or something to that effect, um, you're going to have a more difficult time as far as getting the dog to move with you. In fact, harnesses, if the dog stops in its tracks, if you pull, likely the harness will just come right off the dog. Happens all the time. Okay, so we want something that's around the neck, um, preferably a prong collar, but you can also use a slip lead, uh, choke collar, any of those will do. <laughs> so long as it is something that will be tightened around the neck, and that won't slip off. <clears throat> so a buckle collar that's usually fit loose will not work. Uh, you can also use a martingale. So all those are good options to, to look into. But ideally, when your dog stops in its tracks, it does not want to move forward with you any longer. This could just be stubborn behavior. Um, I don't want to, or I don't want to go that way for whatever reason. Uh, it may not even be that your dog's tired. It could be, but it, you may just have a dog that has attitude. That happens all the time. So, let's say the dog was stopped in his tracks, right? Sit. Muncie obviously probably will follow me, but, nope, sit. Might be the wrong demo dog. But let's say the dog stopped in his tracks. I'm going to, I'm going to stand this way. <laughs> sit. Good. I'm going to act like I'm still going to keep moving forward, right? I'm going to have my back to the dog, and I'm going to apply pressure with the leash, okay? I'm not going to pull the dog like I'm dragging, but I'm going to apply pressure. As soon as the dog takes one step, just a tiny little, little step, I'm going to release the pressure, and I'm going to say, good. I don't need to get overly excited, but I want to tell the dog that, yes, that's what I want. I want you to start slipping forward. This exercise may require quite a bit of patience and time, uh, if your dog is incredibly stubborn. But if you do, you, most likely you will only have to do this a few times, say, I mean like a few walks, uh, to get them out of this habit, okay? So again, I'm gonna continue to move forward and I'm going to apply pressure. And as soon as they take one little step, or maybe it's multiple steps and that's cool, or they just keep walking, excellent, either way, mark it with good and keep walking. If the dog stops right away, you're going to do the same thing over and over and over again until your dog continues to walk with you, okay? That's why I say it might take a little time because they might just give you a tiniest little steps, tiniest little steps, but stick with it. If you keep doing that, no, you will get a dog that starts following you. If the dog still continues, you can even get low. Right up. You can get low and you can get highly encouraged and tell you, let's go, let's go, let's go. You can do that way too, by still, and still applying pressure, and you may get more energy from the dog or, or more interest into moving forward with you. So there's a couple ways that you can go about it, but I would much rather you start by doing this way, moving forward, not giving in, not babying the dog so much into really coming forward. But if, like I say, if you're still struggling, you can get down, get more encouraging, and try it that way as well. So. Trial and error, uh, but we want to make sure the dog knows that this is not something that we're going to put up with. That's why doing this motion and moving for acting like you're moving forward and, and just rewarding the small movements is the better way to go uh, rather than the, the kind of more coddling and, and <laughs> you know, that sort of uh, way of going about it. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Uh, so make sure you use something that goes around the neck and apply pressure. 
when they stop and release it as soon as they begin to follow. All right, and be patient, my friends. Always be patient when you when, when you dog training. It's a huge part of it uh, because the dogs don't always know exactly what to do right away, and it just may take some time. So, but once you uh, designate what, what the, the walk is going to be like, what the rules are, the dog will follow, okay? You just gotta lead the way. All right, you guys, Chloe here for your dog training. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, be sure to take advantage of the times when we give the opportunity to you for you to ask questions. Uh, I know you all got them because I get them in the DM all the time. So, all right, you guys, take care, and we'll see you next time.